Hi, I'm Shalane from TSE Tuition, and today I'll be going through a short passage from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Let's get started. Uh, the passage I'm looking at is specifically from Act 1, Scene 1, lines 171 to 181. Um, so what's happened before this passage is that there's been fighting on the streets between the house of Montague and Capulet. They hate each other and so they've been fighting on the streets again. Um, and so the fighting's, you know, cleared off, but obviously the street is still a bit of a mess. Um, and Benvolio, who is Romeo's best friend, has gone to find him. And as it turns out, Romeo was not a part of the fight, which is excellent, but Romeo is not feeling very good. He's feeling very sorry for himself. And, you know, he's just a bit down in the dumps. And Benvolio eventually gets it out of him that Romeo's fallen in love with a girl, but the girl doesn't like him back, which is very unfortunate. So they're talking and they're walking along the street and they come across this, this scene of carnage, of just mess everywhere because, you know, they've been fighting. And Romeo says, what fray was here? Yeah, tell me not, for I've heard it all. He has much to do with hate, but more with love. Why then, O oh, brawling love, O oh, loving hate, O oh, anything of nothing first create? O oh, heavy lightness, serious vanity, misshapen chaos of well-seeming forms, feather of lead, bright smoke, cold fire, sick health, still waking sleep, that is not what it is. This love feel I that feel no love in this. Dost thou not laugh? So that's what he says to, to Benvolio. And... So what we're going to do is we're going to unpack it bit by bit. Uh, so they come across the, so I'm going back to line 171. Um, so they've come across the scene of carnage and Romeo says, what's happened here? What fray was here? But Romeo is a smart cookie. He knows what's happened. He says, yeah, tell me not. Don't tell me for I've heard it all. Here's much to do with hate. This scene, this fighting, this turmoil caused by hate, much to do with hate, but more with love, the turmoil inside of me has been caused by love. And then he describes what he's feeling. He tries to put it into words, the, the feelings that he's feeling inside of him. And he says, why then? Oh, and he describes it as thus, oh, brawling love, oh, loving hate. So immediately we see that these are pairs of of, of, of words that don't normally go together. You know, we, we don't normally associate love with brawls. We don't normally associate love with hate, you know, much less describe hate as loving. Um, and then he continues, it goes on throughout the rest of this passage, and he uses these, these, um, these opposing pairs of words to describe what he's feeling. Um, or anything of nothing first create, um, anything created out of, no, out of nothing in the first place. A heavy lightness, serious vanity, heavy emptiness, misshapen chaos of well-seeming forms. Well-seeming forms are, you know, forms that seem attractive. Feather of lead, bright smoke, coal fire, sick health, still waking sleep, always awake, still waking, still waking sleep. That is not what it is. This love feel, I, this love that I feel, that feel no love in this and I am not loved in return. Does thou not love? This is not ridiculous. This is not crazy. Um... So he's describing this feeling of loving someone, wanting someone to love them back and yet not having it in this set of descriptions. And it's quite interesting because later on, um, about in my, in my version, it's about a page later, um, he describes it and what he's done to this girl to, to try and make her love him. She won't have him. He wants her really bad, but she just won't have it. He's tried, you know, loving words. He's tried to, you know, give her puppy eyes. And and, um, and he's, he's even tried to bribe her um, because, you know, Romeo's from a rich family. Um, but yet she's, she's, she's not, not having any of it. She doesn't want him. She doesn't really want anything to do with him. She doesn't much less love him. And so here's Romeo in this predicament. He's obsessed with this girl. He wants her so bad. 
Um, he wants her to love him. He wants her to want him. And yet it's not happening. And so this set of emotions that he's feeling is this polar opposite as we, as we can see. He feels like, he feels heavy like lead, yet light like fire, like feathers, sorry. Um, he feels cold but on fire. He feels sick but healthy. He feels like he's dreaming but he's always awake. Um, and, and what's quite beautiful about this, this set of descriptions is that Shakespeare puts it into words that, I don't know about you, but if I felt like that, I wouldn't put it into words like that. I would just feel like, I feel like, ah, that's what I, that's how I would describe it. Um, but yet here Shakespeare's put it into these, these beautiful sets of these, these beautiful pairs of words that shouldn't make sense, but it does it. And it makes beautiful, perfect sense in the context of what Romeo is feeling. And what's amazing is that we can read them as like, you know what? I felt like that. It feels like that. It actually feels like that. This, this frustration, this, this sense of, I feel like you know, polar opposites at the same time. And it's just frustrating and it's confusing and it's, and it's just awful, just awful. Um, it's, it's crushing on someone who, you know, hates you. How ridiculous is that? How, how crazy is that? Does thou not laugh? Is this not ridiculous? Um, and what's, and this is a very good example of, of what's quite beautiful about most of Shakespeare's work is that he doesn't talk or he doesn't make the focus of his play um, the plot because especially in Romeo and Juliet, we know they're going to die. Within the first 30 seconds of the play, we get told they are dying. They are going to be dead by the end of the play. There is no happily ever after. And so the plot, what happens to them and what happens to these two people is not really the point. The point is the emotions that they go through from beginning to end, um, emotions which we can identify with because at some point or another, all of us will have felt these kinds of emotions, emotions like jealousy, Othello, ambition, Macbeth, love, Romeo and Juliet, obsession, infatuation, crushing on someone, Romeo in this passage. And that's beautiful because, because it's just beautifully packaged in this mini, mini poem um, of, of oxymorons and it's, just just beautiful um so there you go uh that's that's a very short passage and a very short explanation of um romeo and juliet um from act one scene one i hope you enjoyed that so thanks for watching uh subscribe to the channel or subscribe to or like the facebook page and let me know what you'd like me to talk about next